Hi, and welcome to today's Barnes Takeout. My name is Amy Gillette. I'm a collections researcher at the foundation. Today, let's go into room number three, and we're going to look at this painting right over here. Let's zoom in a teeny bit, entitled Dramatic Poetry, and subtitled Aeschylus, painted right around the year 1896 by French artist Pierre Pepi de Chavon. And as is really standard practice, and I think is productive before looking at our particular picture, I think it's always nice to contextualize it within the ensembles that Dr. Barnes orchestrated when he was still living. And so something that hops out to me immediately is maybe, I guess we could say, this element of line. How if we look at the top of our painting, it's arched, as is the inside arch of this confessional cage, the lock of the padlock above it, and both of these are done in France a little bit earlier, maybe 17th into the 18th century. And something I think would have absolutely delighted Albert Barnes is the fact that in this building across the parkway where the Barnes is now, we see these arched windows. And on top of that, we also do see our painting looking forward in many ways to this painting over here entitled The Nursemaid, painting, painted by American artist Milton Avery in the year 1934. And so if we look at the ensemble, we see that the paintings are similar in their dimensions in their color palettes. But if we look a little bit more closely, what we can see as well that there are geometric grids that govern them both. In fact, dramatic poetry has been x-rayed and there is a grid that Pravita Shaban had delineated underneath. And so looking at both of them as relatively kind of free-handed as the Milton Avery piece might seem, you may be able to see that any um, any kind of scumbling, what looks to be accidental is purely internal. And so what we're gonna do now is look a little bit more at the context of dramatic poetry, both in terms of where it was stalled and installed in stylistically. So heading on in, here we are. Like I mentioned, the subtitle of this painting is Aeschylus, and that refers to this man here. Um, reclining in this purple robe on this grayish rock. This is the, the ancient Greek poet Aeschylus, who was active in the earlier 5th century BCE. And we see him reading from the script of a play that's traditionally attributed to him, entitled Prometheus Bound. And that is the action that we see unfolding in the water of the Aegean Sea before us. And so we've got this tall purple rock on which the Titan named Prometheus is chained. If you look at his handcuffs, the way he's chained on his ankles as well. And what he has done is he's given human beings the gift of fire. And this has made Zeus and the Olympian god very angry. And Zeus is somebody who's just very recently taking control of the cosmos and wants to rule it tyrannically and wants to overthrow human beings. And so Prometheus has given them what's basically the, the kindling of knowledge and Zeus wants to punish him for it. And so not only is he bound to the rock, but there's this bird of prey, either an eagle or a vulture, depending on what you read, that comes every single day to devour the liver of Prometheus that then again regenerates on a daily basis. And so these women that we see floating around him are the ocean nymphs, one of, whom, one of whom is his mother. And in conversation with him in the play, he Prometheus says that 13 generations thence, he will be rescued by the Greek hero Heracles or Hercules, if we use the Latin name. Now that's, that's the story. And and I think it's important to note that this piece that we've got in the barns was not meant to be a standalone one, but rather was one in a series among eight others installed in the Boston Public Library. And so probably looking at this image right here, you see right away why I've included it, where this is a much bigger version of the ones that we've got at the barns. Either ours is a study for it or a scaled down version of it, but it's 
a representation of dramatic poetry, again, flanked by pastoral poetry, epic poetry, other branches of human knowledge. And this one over here, as a matter of fact, is actually electricity or, or physics. You see the electric wires over here. And this, I think ours was particularly apt for this installation because um, in the play that is attributed to Aeschylus, it turns out that Prometheus had said that he hadn't given human beings just fire, but truly all the branches of knowledge that are consequent from that, the humanistic as well as the natural sciences. And then um, kind of dovetailing that, let's go ahead. This is the summation of this game in the, in the loggia of the Boston Public Library with um, a complex title. It's called the, Inspi the Inspiring Muses Acclaimed Genius, Messenger of Light. And so here's the figure of genius, just zooming in on this cloud with, I suppose, these olive branches or florals kind of flanking and then the different muses with their musical and other instruments all about. And really making the point truly that human knowledge and human freedom are hand in glove. And this is something that I think is quite delightful in the sense that Prabhu de Chavon was a, a French artist, but gifting this art to a new American institution. And going ahead from there, I, I do want to think about the style that we see these images rendered in. So here, um, this is an image that's at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. And again, like um, like the site of the Boston Public Library that I showed you, you probably can guess why you're seeing it, where again, we've got this vertically oriented purple rock rising out of the sea. We've got more floating human beings. Over here is the hero Perseus about to rescue Andromeda. And Roman art, as this was made in the, um, the first century CE in the Bay of Naples, was a major inspiration to him. And we can see not only the, the color of the pigments and um, Puvi did make some interesting scientific experiments where he used special techniques to blot out the oil. Um, but on top of that, we see this desire to integrate painting as well as architecture that in the way that Poop did it, it was not only retrospective, but future looking too. And to make that point, let's go back to the Barnes Foundation. Let's step into the main gallery in the parkway and look up at this just glorious painting, series of paintings that French artist Aaron Matisse did in the early 1930s entitled The Dance. And Matisse had made it um, size to order for the dimensions of the main gallery of the Barnes Foundation. Like Prabhu de Chavon, he did not paint it actually on the wall, but rather in France to the measured dimensions of the space. And if you look beneath the springs of the vaults over here, you may even be, be able to see the canvas scenes like there and there. And Matisse acknowledged his debts to, to Puvi in terms of how he was able to respect past traditions, architecture, look to the future. And I'm going to read you a quote that he said after his acknowledgement to, um, to the artist that had preceded him. And Matisse wrote, I'm gonna read, in my studio, the dance was only a painted canvas. There in the Barnes Foundation, it became a rigid thing, heavy as stone and one that seemed to have been created at the same time with the building. Dr. Barnes said, one would like to call the place a cathedral now. Your painting is like the rose window of a cathedral. And I love that as a quote. To think back to our own painting, where we went together myth and painting and architecture, light, the branches of human knowledge that do, do borrow from what comes before us, but ideally always look ahead 
And with that, I thank you for watching today. And, and, and that is it for today's Burns Takeout. I'm Tom Collins, Neubauer Family Executive Director of the Barnes Foundation. I hope you enjoyed Barnes Takeout. Subscribe and make sure your post notifications are on to get daily servings of art. Thanks for watching and for your support of the Barnes Foundation.